shockwave executes a cold, brutal, and scientific approach to war. With logic dictating that he is the better choice, Shockwave has long and secretly sought to overthrow Megatron as leader of the Decepticons. As a laser gun, he can emit lethal beams of energy from anywhere on the electromagnetic spectrum. Gamma rays, X-rays, light, infrared rays, radio waves, etc. Able to fly in both laser gun or robot mode, Shockwave has a high fuel consumption rate, but he can be powered by nuclear sources. Unlike most other Transformers, he is not solely dependent on Energon. A master of logic and science, and second in might only to Megatron, Shockwave is often confounded by initiative and emotional thinking. One of the rare Transformer toys that didn't originate from Takara's Diaclone or Microchange lines, the original toy that became Shockwave was originally released by Toyko as Astro Magnum. Transforming into a sci-fi blaster pistol, both the original and Transformer releases featured lights and sound. I drove my parents up a wall with this thing. Despite appearing early in both the cartoon and comics, he was imported by Hasbro and released in the second wave of Transformers in 1985. Shockwave was featured throughout the first two seasons of the series, and when he was discontinued, he was planned to be killed off in 1986's Transformers the Movie, when the giant robot form of Unicron attacks planet Cybertron. However, his death was never included in the final film. Being most loyal to the planet Cybertron above all else, a story was planned for him in the third season of the series. Defecting to the Autobots, he would help protect Cybertron from their mutual enemy, the Quintessons. However, this storyline at the last minute was given over to Decepticon Blitzwing since Shockwave's toy had been discontinued. There are several reoccurring ideas that most versions of Shockwave come back to time and again, from experimental mad scientist to being an evil being of cold, pure logic, devoid of any emotion. In some stories, he's utterly loyal to Megatron, and in others, he is secretly plotting to take control of Cybertron for himself. From a senator punished for his corruption, to a Decepticon secret agent infiltrating Autobot High Command, there are no greater differences in Shockwave's various incarnations than the incredibly loyal one we see in the G1 cartoon and the one from Marvel Comics that utterly crushes and overthrows Megatron. But for now, we must face the ultimate doom. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and let me just say Happy New Year to all of you, and a very happy 40th anniversary to our favorite franchise of all time. Now, let's not waste any more time because we've got three whole episodes to get through. So, this is Season 1, Episodes 11 through 13, The Ultimate Doom. Off the Malabar coast of India, a Maharaja has converted his palace into a solar power station as a gift to his people. The solar collectors are producing 300 units of energy per second. Excellent! What can go wrong? What can be happening? Yes. What indeed? I hear the Maharaja's holding an open house! As always, Decepticons attack. The Autobots respond. Optimus Prime! Autobots transform! Megatron overwatches the operation, alongside Dr. Arkaville, our first ever human villain. You promised me a guinea pig, Megatron. I need one for my experiment. Patience, Dr. Arkaville. Operation Guinea Pig is proceeding according to schedule. Laser Pig transform! Turns out the whole thing was a ruse to distract Optimus Prime and the Autobots. The real target was Sparkplug all along. Spike states the obvious. The Decepticons have captured my dad! Meanwhile, back in India, robots continue to shoot at each other. Decepticons! Operation Guinea Pig complete! Return to base! Decepticons! 
Laserbeak brings his prisoner back to the Decepticon base. Let me go, you big light beaked buzzard! I have something which will interest you. It had better function, Doctor, or you may cease functioning. I have worked too diligently to fail now, Megatron. Watch! Whatever you're doing, the Autobots will stop you. Cheer up, Spike. We'll get Sparkplug back safe no matter what it takes. I've got the plan. If all of you've got the cast iron manifolds for it, we have. After declaring his troops have the Transformer equivalent of large balls, Optimus Prime and his team move out to save Sparkplug. Readiness, Megatron. Are you sure the new space bridge will be large enough to transport its special cargo? What's this about a space bridge and a special cargo? That's not your affair. Here shall be yours when we are through with it. That's all you need to know. Now, give me a demonstration. My hypnochip has the power to override the will of the individual. I and I alone control the actions of my subject. <laughs> Excellent, Doctor. Your hypnochip will provide me with a means to conquer Earth and the Autobots once and for all. The Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Arriving off the coast of the Decepticons' underwater lair, the Autobots set Prowl's plan into motion. You have your assignments? Go for it! Into the ocean, let's be daring! The last one in is a rusty herring! A scanner at 12 o'clock, Prime. Let's see if they can scan this! Autobots, move in! As Prime and the others engage Megatron and his goons underwater, Brawn and Cliffjumper tunnel below the ocean floor. Freeing Sparkplug, the Autobots flee. Pretty sure the pressure from the bottom of the ocean would have killed him. Those Autobots will pay for this! <laughs> they certainly will! They've just taken our slave into their midst! Gee, Dad, it's sure great to have you back. Dad? No talk. There is work to be done. Back at Autobot base, the reunion is not as happy as one would assume. Something's wrong with Dad. You're not kidding. Prime circuits are fine, spark plug. I told you I fixed them, didn't I? I'm a mechanic. I know what I'm doing. Attack! The Decepticons make an unexpected attack on Autobot base. Teletran 1 must have blown his beta bios! What's going on? The destruction of your breed, Autobot! Spike makes a heartbreaking realization. 
Dad's wrench. That's why the alarm didn't go off. Dad sabotaged Teletran. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. How is he watching this? The cons want me to. Oh! Dad! Oh! Out of my way! Parting is such sweet sorrow. Farewell, Autobots, forever! When all is lost, Spike defeats the Decepticons by setting off the fire alarm accidentally. Fire retardant foam! Our circuitry's been shorted out! Who knew after millions of years this war could have been won with some flame retardant foam? This foam will permanently damage our circuitry! The Autobots it is never used again. Retreat! Come! Join me and rule! Dad, you're not like the Decepticons! Then you will fight against your own father. When next we meet, we are enemies! We are even now. Hmm. When next we meet. We meet as enemies. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Porsche 935 Turbo no power to car robot no mecha ga docking. エンジン回転をレッドゾーンに上げて機関ボディーが駆け抜ける今君の手にカーロボットポルシェ935ターボ カーロボット隊は移動基地バトルコンボイを完成させた 大型トレーラーフリーゾンエネルギーの補給 整備ドック、指令基地としての役割を果たすバトルコンボイの登場でカーロボットの世界が変わる移動基地、バトルコンボイ。We now return to the Transformers. Of the energy pylons. Please note, the Decepticon's energy pylon has a dial that looks like a Betty Crocker kitchen timer. So, Megatron, you're finally preparing this space bridge to send that special cargo, eh? Precisely, Doctor. And the cargo will be nothing less than our home planet of Cybertron. Your planet? You're bringing a planet to the Earth? Yes. But the gravity of your planet will create earthquakes, tidal waves. It will devastate my planet. Ah, but that devastation will create a tremendous flow of energy. Energy which your hypnochip slaves will collect into energon cubes. The cubes will then easily be shipped to Cybertron for our use. But what will be left of Earth then? I will be ruler of a dead world! A small problem, my dear doctor, for your amazing genius. Wow, who knew Megatron would turn out to be a treacherous dick? After repairing Teletran 1, the Autobots figure out the location of the Decepticon energy pylons. We must investigate at once. Roll for it! As the humans attack the Autobots, it is at least as consistent as when the humans attack the Decepticons. More like a petty nuisance. Autobots would avoid harming humans at all costs. Hey, this is not my scene! Jade! There are no good aliens, or bad aliens, Jaeger. It's just us and them. 
and you chose them. And there was only one director that ever told me, he said, well, just say it anyway, I, 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 I want to have it, I want to have it. I, I just don't feel comfortable. So, well, listen, uh, just read the line. He said, okay, okay, I'll read it. And it's just not Optimus, you know? It wasn't Optimus. I'll kill them all. You know, that's not Optimus, you know? Yeah. Autobots, hold your fire! We cannot endanger the humans! I think I've made my point. Final countdown phase. If energy pylons are not operational, Cybertron will be catapulted into oblivion. Shockwave is great at parties. Pylon number one, activated! Prime races to stop Megatron from activating the last pylon, but finds himself facing a great moral dilemma. That's the last one you're activating, Megatron! Correct! You will activate the last pylon and bring Cybertron here! As the Earthlings say, fat sense, fathead! If you don't, you will be responsible for Cybertron's destruction! Destruction? But there are still many inhabitants, friends, on Cybertron. Then make your choice, Optimus Prime. Very well, Megatron. You win. Can't help but feel there was another solution here, but all right, let's just keep the story moving. Most likely, yeah. Is it me, or is this episode a ripoff of Transformers Dark of the Moon? Anyways, let's talk about human villains, shall we? In addition to Dr. Archiville, human villains from the G1 cartoon include Sean Berger, Lord Chumley, Ferg, Victor Drath, Dutch, and of course, Old Snake. <laughs> They simply don't make terrorists like they used to. Cobra! <laughs> and let's not forget Abdul Fakadi, the self-professed supreme military commander, president for life, and king of kings of the Socialist Democratic Federated Republic of Carbamia. Also, the reason that Casey Kasem left the series. We'll save that for another time. And yes, the Marvel comic had its share of human villains too, like the mechanic and obscure fan favorite Circuit Breaker, a character so wrapped up in legal red tape, she's likely to never be a part of Transformers again. Human villains in the live action movies include many recognizable celebrities, such as Kelsey Grammer, Titus Welliver, Patrick Dempsey, and even Shia LaBeouf, to name a few. From over 40 years, the list of humans, machines, and aliens that hold a grudge against the Transformers race goes on forever. For me, the most shocking villain reveal of all time goes to independent Dreamwave comics in the early 2000s, when it turned out a crashed starship containing all the Autobots returning home to Cybertron was in fact sabotaged by Sparkplug himself. A very different take than his Marvel Comics equivalent. This Sparkplug was a more reluctant ally to the Autobots. Unlike this asshole. I'm sorry, Spike. Sometimes nothing you do makes any difference. After repairing Bumblebee, Sparkplug's help is sought by Optimus Prime, 
However, things go south pretty quickly as the Decepticons arrive and intercept Sparkplug. The second issue ended on a cliffhanger as he was taken as the Decepticons hostage. I never thought I'd be sad to see Cybertron. The Decepticons will triumph! <laughs> Join me, Spike! Join the Conquerors! Dad... Look, I told you, don't call me that! Didn't you just offer him a chance to join you? Oh, whatever. My actions may have cost Earth its future. Decepticon rule forever! <laughs> forever shorter than you think. Turns out, Spike is done with this bullshit. Megatron, look out! Pathetic flesh creature! Disruptor waves! Don't Sound waves, audio disruptor waves encourage the Autobots to retreat. Are you okay, Bumblebee? Yeah, except for a buzzing in my battery circuit. How about you, Spike? Okay? Yeah, fine. It's fine. me again, Starscream, and I'll reduce you to titanium fragments. But we had the Autobots disoriented. We could As always, Starscream crosses the line with Megatron and has to be given his final warning. Done. You have had the only warning I intend to give. Megatron! It's, it's empty! You failed to dispose of me when you had the chance, Starscream. Mistake number two. You have had the only warning I intend to give. Laserbeak acquires two more hostages. More raw material for you, Doctor! Convert them into my slaves! Somebody! Get us out of here! Ironheart, where are you? Right on your caboose, Prime! But I can't even see your taillights! I can't even see the road! The Autobots return home in a torrential downpour. Bumblebee gets a blowout. Spike has to change the tire. Just a few astro seconds more and I'll be fine! Megatron's new slaves collect energy from intense storms. Excellent! Hey, something's happening. What's that noise? Earthquake! <laughs> Hang on, Spike. I think I can make it. Let me go, you beryllium buzzard! The first commercial break comes with a pointless cliffhanger. The Transformers will return after these messages. キンキュシレ出動カードボットスティーレアレディは三丸七ポイントに急行せよスティー了解レアレディ了解電車出動君はどれに乗り込むか宝のカードボット カードボット。Tired of losing battle after battle in the sky, the Autobots create the ultimate robot jet. Jetfire. Transformers! 
more than meets the eye. But the evil Decepticons have a secret new weapon. Shockwave. The Transformers. Robots in disguise. from Hasbro. We now return to the Transformers. After the commercial, the Autobots risk murdering Spike in order to save his life. Using Wind Charger's tractor beams, the Autobots are able to rescue Bumblebee from the chasm below. What a relief! Boy, it's good to see you! You look like somebody mugged your manifold! <laughs> the Decepticons prepare to ship Energon over the new shorter distance to Cybertron. Why are you sending one of my slaves to Cybertron? Because with a human present, the Autobots will not take aggressive action against Cybertron. But I can only control my slaves from my computer here. We have duplicated your computer on Cybertron. It is no longer just your computer. This is a relationship built in trust. Remember our agreement, Megatron. The Earth is to be mine when you are through with it. It will be. What's left of it? <laughs> Terrible consequences continue to ravage the Earth. Optimus Prime sends the Dinobots to stop the Decepticons. They can take more punishment than any of us. Perhaps it's worth a try. Dinobots! Transform! The havoc the Decepticons wreaked on Earth at last backfires on them. Both Decepticons and Autobots are forced to evacuate their respective bases. Report, Wheeljack! Amazing! This volcano is becoming active again! Autobots, transform! I don't think there's a lot of science in what I just saw. Ironhide, come back! Come back! Ironhide will never make it! The Transformers will return after these messages. Die! <laughs> To help them in their never-ending battle against the evil Decepticons, the Autobots create a new breed of robot, Dinobots. Separately from Hasbro. We now return to the Transformers. Okay. 
using even less science, Ironhide stops the volcano. Yeah, when you got it, use it. Elsewhere, the Dinobots establish themselves as eco-warriors. However, down the shore, several thousand people drown to death. I'm not certain, but for the moment, I feel we must not let the boy find out. Find out what? Spike, we have information that Sparkplug has been taken to Cybertron. Dad? On Cybertron? Optimus Prime, let me take Skyfire. We'll get him back. It's too dangerous. I can't let you do that, Spike. But if we can save Dad, we may learn what hold Megatron has over him and other Earth people. Always good to send a miner into an active war zone. Hey, wait for me! Anakin, stay where you are. You'll be safe there. But I... Stay in that cockpit. The Autobot strike team lands on Cybertron. Hey, watch it! After fumbling around, Spike, Brawn, and Bumblebee make a game-changing discovery. Decepticon headquarters. And look at this. Hypno-chip control? Hey, that's what they've done to Dad. They're controlling his mind. Okay, so Spike finally caught up to the rest of us. Someone's coming. Hi. So Spike hides, but leaves his dad's wrench out, so his dad will know Spike is here, then steps out of hiding. My favorite wrench. Hmm. Where could... Hi, Dad. Spike, what are you... Oh! An invader! The Decepticons must be alerted! Dad! Dad, don't! Must sound alarm! That spike gets so emotional sometimes. Speaking of spark plug in hostage situations, let's get back to Marvel Comics. After being taken hostage, spark plug is forced against his will to help the Decepticons convert Earth fuel. In a series of overlapping flashbacks, we learn that this is not the first time that he was a prisoner of war. In a bizarrely rare team up with Spider Man, Sparkplug is freed and brought back to Autobot base. However, the reunion is not all celebration, as the Autobots learn that Sparkplug has helped the Decepticons convert fuel. Anger and accusations begin flying. This is where the comic takes a drastic turn. Sparkplug decides it is time for he and his son to leave. In the confusion, Jazz tries to stop them by blasting a wall of fire in their path. Sparkplug falls into cardiac arrest. Ratchet immediately brings him and Buster to the nearest hospital. Huffer reports to Optimus Prime that five members of the crew were awoken shortly after they crashed on prehistoric Earth. The Dinobots were activated to stop Shockwave. The battle ended with all of them being buried alive for several million years. Sending a probe to scout the situation, we learn that something has survived. Attack is imminent. Both Autobots and Decepticons fuel up for battle. The Decepticons strike the base as Sparkplug is taken into medical care. In a series of flashbacks, we learned in the war he used his time as a prisoner of war to sabotage enemy vehicles he was forced to repair, thus turning the tide in battle and leading to his own freedom. As the gruesome battle between robot warriors draws to a head, it becomes clear that there is something wrong with the Decepticons. Sparkplug has tricked them. Using a contaminated fuel source, the Decepticons malfunction and lose the battle. The Autobots stand victorious, if only for a moment. A sudden blast renders all the Autobots inert. The true victor reveals himself. Shockwave is the last bot standing. That's where the original four-part miniseries ended. It was a sellout hit and it was months before they would return as a regular series. Upon its return, 
it became clear that things were about to change, as Shockwave began to take control of the Decepticons away from the wounded and belittled Megatron. This leads to one of the greatest hand-to-hand -hand throwdowns in all of Transformers history. Megatron attacks Shockwave, despite his injuries. Shockwave logically uses this to his advantage, as he breaks and humiliates Megatron for all other Decepticons to see. The power struggle between the two was ongoing throughout the rest of the series. However, after a year of adventures involving Ratchet finding the Dinobots, and Buster gaining the power of the Matrix, Optimus Prime is fully restored and takes Shockwave to the fucking cleaners. Soon after, Megatron would make his triumphant return. Dad! Forgive me. We gotta get out of... Oh. Before they can escape, the Autobots discover they are surrounded. Braun, however, is not in the mood to take anyone's shit. I don't take so easy. Take the boy and destroy them! Can anyone join the party, or do we need an invitation? When all hope is lost, Skyfire and the others burst through the wall. Our heroes escape without spark plug, but still with vital intel just the same. Autobots escaping! You cannot get out! I can now! After a brief chase, Spike and the Autobots make it back to Wheeljack's laboratory, which looks nothing like his laboratory the last time we saw it. Factory. Wow. I bet you can work miracles here. He'll need to if I'm gonna learn how the Decepticons control your dad. I uh, found this little knickknack at Decepticon headquarters, a computer disk with their mind control program. Mind control, of course! Yes, of course. Surfing Autobots approach the Decepticon camp. I have zero complaints about this visual. In fact, I want it on a t-shirt. Maintain speed and sail on! Starscream, install this generator! A waste of time, Megatron! I said install it! You heard my order, Starscream? You are to avoid contact with him. Do not disobey me, Doctor. Hmm. Perhaps Starscream is the ally I've been looking for. This guy goes from one toxic relationship to the next. In the world of the Transformers, nothing is what it seems. Beat the Constructicon, six evil robots that transform into one mechanical giant. Transformers, more than meets the eye. The Transformers, robots in disguise. It's Devastator, six Constructicons in one. Each 
sold separately. Devastators attacking! The Transformers sold separately from Hasbro. We now return to the Transformers. Proving they are awesome to the max, the Autobots make it to the Decepticon camp. Despite a major wipeout, they assess the situation. Autobots, report your condition. Operational Prime, and ready to give Megatron a nickel knuckle sandwich. Too late for that. Look. Megatron is through with you, but I am not. The score indicates this can only be good. Back on Cybertron, Wheeljack contacts Prime with an update. But we've learned how the Decepticons are making Earth people into mind slaves. That's good news. You have any plan to counteract their work? Let's just say we're onto something that looks like a winner. If it works. After that, we'll they make feel. a second attempt to rescue Sparkplug. Where is my father? Here. Tell him what he wants to know, Spike. Be one of us. Yes. Where are the Autobots? Right behind you, Shockwave. And we brought a present. <laughs> huh? Where? What am I doing? About to murder your son. After successfully freeing Sparkplug, the Autobots flee at last. Regrouping with Skyfire, they make their way back to Earth. Thanks, guys, for not giving up on me. Especially you, Spike. Dad, it's like you taught me. You never quit on the people you love. Mushy. But true. This should be our final shipment to Cybertron. The Autobots prepare for one last offensive. Starscream crosses Megatron's line for the last time. I want the slaves to work faster. Where is Dr. Rockerville? It's no use, Doctor. I can't drain enough mind energy from your feeble brain to fill even one cube. Without my own energon source, I shall never be able to take control of the Decepticon. That's mutiny, Starscream. Megatron. And the penalty for mutiny is termination. The Transformers will return after these messages. Paul, look! What is it? It's the Insecticons, an evil new menace from the world of the Transformers. The Transformers, more than meets the eye. The Transformers, robots in disguise. Transformers from Hasbro. In the world of the Transformers, it used to be easy to tell the Autobots from the Decepticons. But now, the mini-spies are on the loose. They look like Autobots, but are they? It's a Decepticon! After him! Transformer mini-spies. You get one with each of the six Autobot mini-car packages. Motorized Transformers. You can't tell if they're Autobots or Decepticons until you rub up their symbol. It's an Transformer Mini Spies. Get them while supplies last from Hasbro. We are conquerors. No one is like us. Only we have the right to be called by the name. Only we have the right to wear this symbol. Or this symbol. Only we are Autobots and Decepticon. Good versus evil. And only we have the right to be called the Transformers. The Transformers. Only the Transformers are real Transformers, each sold separately from Hasbro. We now 
return to the Transformers. Say farewell, traitor! Megatron! Emergency! Once Megatron is distracted, Starscream escapes with Dr. Arkaville. I shall return! Look! The slaves are malfunctioning! But it's not possible! Seems like you've run out of trusty friends, Megatron. And now that your former slaves are safely out of the way, we can attack! Kids, if you're into fighting robots, this is the show for you. We're outnumbered! I suggest a strategic retreat for regrouping! Skyfire! And not an astrosecond too soon. Your slave control time's over, Megatron! It's Independence Day! Hooray! They're free! It's time for you and me to settle things. You have a bigger problem to deal with, Prime! The Earth and everything on it! He's about to be destroyed! It's your problem too, Megatron! I won't be here! I'm off to Cybertron with enough energy to rule forever! And Prime just lets him walk onto the ship, letting the door close without chasing or shooting him. As if the plot needed it to happen. Tidal wave will destroy human life across the face of the globe. It won't do us any good either. We can stop it. We just gotta knock Cybertron out of its orbit. The Energon cubes on Megatron's starship. Turns out the answer is for a bunch of robots to fire their guns. Also, to abandon all scientific logic. No! No! The explosion of energy from Megatron's ship knocks Cybertron out of Earth's orbit, I guess. And the animation is stunning. Not a bad day's work, was it, Optimus? I got Dad back, Cybertron's gone, the Earth is safe, and Megatron's finished. Except for all the people across planet Earth that died and all that destruction, huh, Spike? Whatever, asshole. And there we have it, an epic three-part saga for the ages. Now, speaking of the ultimate doom, let's talk about where they done messed up. Sparkplug is talking, but his mouth is not moving. They've pulled out. And without any energon cubes. That does not satisfy my logic circuits. Why do Prime's logic circuits look like an easy-bake oven? This is the wrong voice. Megatron studied levitation at Hogwarts. Again, why are they all dressed like Sparkplug? Did the Decepticons just make uniforms for the rest of them to look like the first guy? Join me, Spike! Join the Conquerors! Dad... Look, I told you! Don't call me that! Gee whiz, Dad. Talk about mixed messages. This isn't a mistake. I just love how mean Rumble is here. <laughs> you humans sure can't take it. The Dinobots, they can take more punishment than any of us. However, Slag's face is wrong. Sideswipe is the wrong color. Bronze head is the wrong color, then right. The angle of that font is going in the wrong direction. Hey, that's what they've done to Dad. They're controlling his mind. Yeah, did you think your dad just suddenly became an asshole overnight? Human slaves in the first shot, pull back, human slaves are not in the second shot. Okay, so when he turns into a gun, does he or does he not need somebody to fire him? And if not, why does he turn into a gun? His arm is a gun. This is a recycled shot of Optimus from the first episode looking sad and talking. 
The special effects are fantastic! Well, as I like to say, I do hope they'll do better next time. And hey, let's all do better next time. We got a whole new year ahead of us. So once again, happy 40th anniversary to Transformers. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, share this video. And once again, I appreciate all the support you have shown me in the last year. And hopefully you'll keep it coming in the new year. So until then, I'll see you next time, my friends.